If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistenrelf, here with a variance deck tech for you. I have been experimenting with 8-rack, trying to make it work in a Rakdos shell. I hope to bring this to a tournament before too long so I can show you videos of whether or not this idea works. But here, let me show you. So, if you don't know what an 8-rack deck is, first of all, let me give you some basics on it. You play cards like The Rack. When it enters the battlefield, choose an opponent. At the beginning of the chosen player's upkeep, it deals X damage to that player, where X is 3 minus the number of cards in their hand. In other words, the fewer cards they have in their hand on their upkeep, the more damage they take. So, yeah, if they have no cards in hand, if you can strip them of all their cards, then they'll take three each turn. Similarly, there's the card Shrieking Affliction. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, if that player has one or fewer cards in hand, they lose three life. Okay, so it's not strictly better than the rack. Obviously, there's color to it. Uh, but even if, if they have just one card in hand, say you strip them all their cards except a land, it'll still deal three instead of two. On the other hand, if they have two cards, it won't deal them any. So, obviously what we're going to try to do is take all the cards out of their hand with discard spells, using, for instance, Inquisition of Kozlek, and if you're watching this deck tech, you probably know what this card is. Same thing with the next one, Thoughtseize, you probably know what this is. We run four of each, we just need that much discard in the deck. Ideally, we would be running four Lilianas of the Veil. Vale. She is, however, a stupidly expensive card at this point, greater than $100 for Near Mint on TCG Player, at TCG Low as of when I'm recording this. She's pretty good, though, obviously. The discard gets around effects like Leyline of Sanctity, the Edict keeps you from dying. And lastly, we do run uh, this card, Ensnaring Bridge. So the reason is because we're going to be emptying our hand very quickly in this deck, and we want to use that to our advantage. We can keep our opponents from being able to kill us, if they have to do it through combat at least. This helps us against low to the ground but big decks, like Zoo especially. Zoo and mid-range, although a lot of mid-range decks can find ways, like Kasali Pride Mage, uh, to beat Ensnaring Bridge. Uh, it doesn't help against Infect, usually, unless you are at actual zero cards in your hand, because they can swing with a one-power creature, and then after they're declared as attacks, pump them up to the point where they're unstoppable. But yes, most of the time, Ensnaring Bridge just wins you the aggro match. Now these are more typical cards in the list, and often you'll see uh, more discard effects, like for example, uh, Blackmail. Or now I'm interested in seeing if Whispers of Emrakul makes it into the list. I'm going to try Splashing Red, however. And doing that allows me to play cards like the following. First of all, we're going back to Shards of Alara with Blightning. Three damage to target player, that player discards two cards. So if you count the 3 damage as a separate card, say Lava Spike, then this is a 3 for 1. Otherwise it's a 2 for 1, just deals a little bit more damage, and again, 2 for 1. Easy enough. Next we have 4 copies of the card Augur of Skulls. Now you could run this in the mono blacklist, obviously. There's a reason why I'm running it here. What we care about is that you play this as a 2 mana creature, and then often you'll find yourself making it to your next upkeep, sacrificing it, and then you just mind rot the opponent. But it's also a 1 1 with regenerate, so what that enables you to do is yeah, if there's a big creature on the other side, say a Tarmogoyf, and you don't have your ensnaring bridge out, this will just protect you on the ground, hopefully for long enough that you can start getting those, you know, those win conditions out. It just stalls the game for long enough that the opponent loses with the Rack or Shrieking Affliction, or you've set up the Ensnaring Bridge, or Liliana of the Veil saves the day. That's what you're here for. And the reason that we run this in the Rakdos list is because of Kolagon's command, as a four of. So this is actually a really sick piece in 8 Rack decks, for a number of reasons. Bear in mind, first of all, that with the exception of Funeral Charm, I think this is actually the only instant speed discard spell in Modern that's CMC 3 or lower. 
Now, Funeral Charm is also useful. You choose one mode, you can make them discard a card, you can give a creature Swamp Walk, or you can give it minus two, minus one, I think. So it's... Piracy Charm is a color-shifted version of Funeral Charm. This lets you not only make them discard a card at instant speed as well, but you get another one as well. You get another mode. Two damage to a creature or player. Fair enough. Destroy an artifact. Or it can go and get a creature back from your graveyard. Well, lo and behold, you can go and get Augur of Skulls back from your graveyard to make them discard again. So something like Augur of Skulls on turn two, Mind Rot the opponent by sacrificing it, Kolagon's Command, make them discard a card, get back Augur of Skulls. Y you get the idea. It gets... It gets kind of silly. At that point, you're just uh, terribly quickly, hopefully anyway, taking cards out of the opponent's hand. And it's important to play cards like Liliana of the Veil, Blightning, and Kolagon's Command, and Augur of Skulls, because while Inquisition of Kozilek, Thoughtseize, and some other options will hit non-lands, you can only hit the lands with these. Now, usually that's not that big of a deal, because if the opponent is just sitting on lands, Often that's a good thing for you anyway, you should be winning. But in the late game, when they already have everything set up, they have all the lands they need to play, um, they just need to keep themselves from having too few cards in hand, they can just keep storing those lands. And playing cards like these will allow you to somewhat get out of that. Now because we're red, it wouldn't really be a red deck if we weren't running Lightning Bolt. There are other options. I considered Flame Slash just because it's a little bit more damage to a creature, and usually we don't need Bolt to hit a player. Often, you know, we're doing enough with the Rack and Shrieking Affliction and Blightning, but I like that versatility, and what really put it over the edge for me is that it's instant speed. So that's very nice. Easy enough, right? It's a 4 of in so many red lists for a reason. It's the most commonly played card in modern for a reason. And next we have just a 1 of Grim Lavamancer. The little, you know, it's, it's a 2 for 1, 3 for 1, 4 for 1, however long the game goes on. This just allows you to repeatedly shock over and over and over again. Which obviously works in a lot of matchups. It just allows you to get some value out of the cards in your graveyard. You're not actually getting that much normally. Kolagon's Command and Grim Lavamancer are pretty much all the value you get, at least in your main board, from your graveyard, and so using something like this has very little cost to it. You could even put more Grim Lavamancers in, although it does get a little awkward when more than one's on the field at once and they have to duel over those resources, but one is fine. Next for our land base, very quickly going through all of these, uh, you go from having a bunch of swamps to and Muta Vault sometimes, to there's Black Cleave Cliffs. You know, it's our fast land from Scars for our colors. Obviously, we're going to run Blood Crypt. Easy enough. These are four ups, by the way. Uh, Bloodstained Mire as a four of. Goes and gets us our Blood Crypts as well as our basics. On those basics, we have uh, three basic swamps and basic mountain, that art in particular, because I am a 13 year old boy. I'll actually scooch these down just a second. We have Sulfurous Springs for giving us our colors as well. We don't ideally we would be playing something else like another fast land, but this just gives us both of our colors still at very little cost. And lastly, we have a one of Keldon Megaliths, since we're running red. So it comes into play tapped, boo. It only produces red, boo, but when you're hellbent, meaning you have no cards in hand, you can activate its ability to deal one damage to target creature or player. So often that can just be used, yes, to keep poking, but also if your opponent, say, is playing elves or infect, where one toughness matters a lot, being able to poke them repeatedly is obviously to your advantage. Now for the sideboard, I don't actually have a solid sideboard, I have options for you, you can use whichever of these are fine for you based on your meta. So, we're going to start off with Blood Moon. <laughs> this is one reason for running more basic swamps. Absolutely, Blood Moon is sick. It is the bomb, right? Against a lot of decks that just outright wins you the game. We're talking Scape Shift, we're talking a lot of the control matches, greedy mana bases like Jund and Absin, although Absin probably has enough mana dorks that they can get out of it.
yeah, Blood Moon is just... <laughs> it's a super sick card. Along those same lines, we have Fulminator Mage. Oh, I, I mentioned... I should mention Tron as well for Blood Moon. Fulminator Mage can also be used there. Cheaper than Blood Moon, if you're wanting to fulfill the same package, but also not strictly worse for a number of reasons. It is a, a creature. It can attack on the ground. It can block. But also, with Coligon's command, you can get this back for repeatable land destruction. Very nice. Next, Knight of Souls Betrayal. Very little cost to you. It does hit both of your creatures for a total of five copies. But, minus one, minus one hits tokens an awful lot. It hits Soul Sisters. It hits Infect. It can do a world of hurt to Affinity. Yeah, Knight of Souls Betrayal works in a lot of matches. Only as a one of though, because it's four mana in a deck that doesn't have too many lands, and it's legendary. For some graveyard hate, I have... Nile Spellbomb. So this one actually draws us a card as well. You can try something like Relic of Progenitus or uh, Tormod's Crypt if you're if you don't need that card draw. Or I say that other than Ensnaring Bridge, why would you not want card draw? But it is one mana, and then if you pop it for free, Relic of Progenitus is one mana, and then one mana more to pop it to hit both players' graveyards. This lets you keep your own graveyard, like Tormod's Crypt. Some combination of cards in that suite, right? Tormod's Crypt, Nile Spellbomb, Relic of Progenitus, whichever you think is most appropriate for your meta and for the deck. Next, I have Rakdos Charm because of its versatility. It hits graveyard decks, of course, at instant speed. It hits affinity by destroying artifacts. And occasionally you might find yourself winning with the last mode, although Splinter Twin is not really a deck anymore. I mean, Kiki Resto is a thing, but Smart players using that know that they can get away with making a non-infinite number of Restoration Angels. Resto has three power. They don't need to make infinity in order to kill you. They don't even need to make an equal number to your life total. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a very versatile card in the format. I guess Elves? You could bring it in against Elves? For Cloudstone Curio and for the Swarm? Uh, it's, it's awkward, but it's, it's there. It's true. Sudden Shock. Why not more removal? Win those counter wars, kill those Delver of Secrets, those Vendillion clicks, those little mana ramp creatures, although they can still tap it for mana. Uh, kill everything in the Infect deck, kill uh, land creatures before they get a chance to respond. It does a lot, absolutely. And next we have or Burn Hate. You could run Dragon's Claw. I'm running Sun Droplet because I don't think we have quite enough red spells to merit Dragon's Claw. Yeah, whenever you're dealt damage, put that many charge counters, and then at the beginning of each player's, or each upkeep, you may remove a charge counter, gain one life. With multiple sun droplets, you can be netting life off of it, and that just gets so brutal for the burn decks. The trick, though, is that they basically get a free turn to kill you, whereas something like Dragon's Claw will let you gain a little bit of life, potentially, before they, you know, before it comes back around to your turn. Uh, yeah. There's an artifact hate package, you could run Shatterstorm, although at 4 mana, I'm not sure that this is consistent enough, but if you do get there, then it just outright wins the game. My personal preference, in addition to Rakdos Charm, is Vandal Blast, because it has both a 1 mana, a smelt mode, and it has a Shatterstorm mode. Although, so this one is also better for a number of reasons. If you use the Shatterstorm, if you use the Wrath version of it, it won't destroy your own Ensnaring Bridge or the Rack. So that's always nice. Um, yeah, and it just destroys in the one-drop slot. You know, take out that Ravager, take out the Cranial Plating, whatever the case may be. There you go, easy enough. So this is the deck as I have it right now. If you have any suggestions, feel more than free to leave them in the comments below. I haven't seen someone try a Rakdos 8 Rack list before, but if you have, let me know. I'd like to learn from them. I'd like to take some tips and uh, see what they do right or what I might be doing better. In any case, take care, Magic Community. I will see you later. Bye-bye.